How's it going, you awesome bunch of bakers? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll show you how to make the smoothest lemon tart you've ever had. So let's go to the kitchen and get started. Summer is coming, so I thought we should make something fresh and citrusy. This lemon tart has an extremely smooth and creamy filling, bursting with lemon flavor. There is no starch in the filling, so it's as smooth as it can be. Paired with that delicate short pastry base, it is perfection. This ain't no lemon curd, it's a custard that's cooked low and slow. Once you try this, you'll be hooked. And the best part is, is that it's not very difficult to make. And I know I always say that, but it's just true. Once you know, you know. So let's get right to it and see what we need to make this. For the pastry base, we'll need some all-purpose flour, some icing sugar, some cold butter that's cut into one inch cubes, the zest of a lemon, some vanilla paste, some salt, a few egg yolks, and a whole egg which will be used for glazing. Okay, on to the filling. For that, we'll need some thick heavy cream, some white caster sugar, or just white granulated sugar, a bunch of eggs, and the zest and the juice of a bunch of lemons. As you can see, there's not many different ingredients in this recipe. As I've said before, it's about how you treat the ingredients that makes the recipe. Okay, for the equipment, we'll need a tray, a bowl, a pot. The pot will be used for warming up the custard, so you should be able to fit the bowl over the pot. We'll also need scales, a fine grater for the lemon zest, a brush, a fork, a sieve for sifting the icing sugar, we'll need a whisk, a spatula, we'll also need a rolling pin, we'll need a jug for pouring the custard, and we'll need a temperature probe. That's a lot of equipment, but that's what it takes to make the start. You could probably do without the jug and without the sieve, but all the other things are pretty much essential. Of course, another thing we need is a tart case, and you need one with a removable bottom. This tart fits perfectly in a 10 inch or 25 centimeter tart case and the height of it is about 1 inch, or around 2.5 centimeters. This is a pretty much standard size for a tart case. So if you own one, it's very likely that it's this shape and size. And there are a couple more things we need, some baking paper, and last but not least, some baking rice or some baking beans. This is very important. This will keep our pastry base nice and flat. And with all that out of the way, let's start making the pastry. In a bowl, combine the flour, the salt, and the cold butter and make sure it's cold. Coat the butter in the flour, then pick up piece by piece and break it up into smaller pieces. And keep repeating, keep coating the smaller pieces of butter in flour again and breaking them up once more. You want the mix to be nice and crumbly, it should look like wet sand when it's done. And this looks just about right to me. Okay, moving on, sift the icing sugar in another bowl. And the only reason I'm sifting it is just to get rid of the lumps. Icing sugar becomes lumpy very quickly, and sometimes it's a struggle to work it into a pastry. So sifting it helps a lot. Okay, once the icing sugar is sifted, add the lemon zest, the vanilla paste, and finally, add the egg yolks. Then grab a whisk and whisk until smooth. The main reason why we're using icing sugar in the pastry is because it's nice and fine. That will avoid us having crunchy sugar crystals in the pastry base. Okay, once the mix is nice and smooth, add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients. Now grab a dough scraper or a spatula and mix it all together until there's no dry flour left. You can finish it by hand if you want to. If it makes it easier. And this is how it should look when it's done. It is nice and loose, that's exactly how it should be. Of course at the moment it's too loose. To make it easier to roll, we'll chill it down. Flatten the pastry into a disc shape and then wrap it up in cling film. Shaping it like this now will make it easier to roll it out later. And of course because it's flat, it will cool down sooner. You want to pop this in the fridge for about one hour. During this time you want to start preheating your oven. 170 degrees Celsius, fan on and that is 338 degrees Fahrenheit. If your oven doesn't have a fan, increase the temperature by about 10%. It's been about an hour, the pastry is nice and set. Now we can roll it out, and we'll roll it between two large sheets of baking paper. This will make it nice and smooth, and nice and straight, make it easier for us to roll it out too. Place the disc of pastry on the paper, cover it with the second piece of paper. Get your tart case, check the size, see how far you need to roll it. Keep those lines in mind, then grab your rolling pin and start rolling it. Nice and slow. You don't want to apply a lot of pressure. This pastry is fragile. If you press too hard, you may break it. Just apply even pressure, roll back and forth side to side, double check the size, you don't want to roll it too thin. This is already just about right. I think it needs just a couple more centimeters on the sides. If you're doing this in summer and your kitchen is very hot, then the pastry will get soft quite quickly. If it is becoming very soft, just pop it back into the fridge as it sits. Let it chill down and then continue. Okay, this is just about perfect. Remember the whole egg I mentioned earlier that will be used for glazing the pastry? 
it will be mixed with a piece of pastry and that will create kind of like a liquid pastry glaze. So at some point we need to remove about 20 grams of this pastry and leave it on the side for that purpose. It is best to remove it after you finish making the pastry. I simply forgot, that's why I trimmed it off just now. But regardless, once the pastry is rolled out, prepare your baking tin by brushing with the butter. And here's my preferred method for getting the pastry into the tin. First, take the removable base and place it in the middle of the pastry. This will ensure that we land exactly where we want to. Now grab the tart ring and lay that down on the pastry as precisely as you can. Now here comes the slightly tricky part. Slide your hand underneath the paper until you reach the middle of the pastry. Then use your other hand to hold the ring and in one smooth gentle move flip the case over. Now slowly remove the paper which may or may not be stuck to the pastry. And again if your kitchen is warm just leave the pastry in the fridge for a while. That will make the paper release more easily from it. Now we just continue with gentle hands as ever. Work the pastry into the tart case until it's filled all the gaps perfectly. Always lift the side up when you try to push it into the corner. This pastry doesn't stretch, it just breaks. But there's no need to worry if it does break. If you need to patch it up, just take a spare piece and use it to fix up any tears. It is very forgiving, very easy to work with. Okay, next up, if you're using a pastry case with a lip like this, you can trim the edge off. If your tart case doesn't have a lip, leave the pastry hanging over the side because if you trim it off, it'll just fall inside the tart case as it bakes. And if you forgot to reserve a piece of pastry earlier, you can use these trimmings here for that. Poke the pastry with a fork all over, this will prevent it from bubbling up as it bakes. Now take a piece of baking paper that is larger than a pastry case, scrunch it up nice and small, open it up and then lay it down in the case and mold it to fit the shape. Scrunching the paper like this makes it smoother, it will conform to the pastry case a lot better. Next up, fill the paper with some baking rice or baking beans. I know that sometimes people use coins, but that seems like it would be very heavy and very hot too. Make sure you press the rice or the beans down properly. You want the paper to fill the pastry case perfectly. Okay, after all that work, it's ready for the oven. First, we'll bake it for 20 minutes. Whilst the pastry case is baking, let's make the glaze. Combine the egg with the scraps that we cut off earlier, and then whisk it until smooth. This glaze will prevent the filling from soaking into the pastry and making it soggy. After the first 20 minutes of baking are up, remove the pastry case from the oven. And now very carefully remove the rice from the pastry case. Of course the paper should be big enough so you can lift it out easily. And at this point you may say damn that's a lot of work for a pastry case. But it needs to be done. This base will be perfectly cooked, it will not be soggy, it will be nice and straight. It's just the correct method for making it properly. I want to remove the rice Brush the pastry with the glaze. You want to brush the whole surface, leave nothing uncovered. Okay, this needs to go back into the oven for around 10 more minutes to be fully baked. It might start blowing up a little bit as it bakes, but don't worry, it will go flat once it leaves the oven again. And there you have it, a perfect pastry case. Now let's turn the oven down to 100 degrees Celsius, still with a fan on. And that is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. We can start making the filling. In a large bowl, combine the sugar, the eggs, the lemon juice and the lemon zest and then give it all a good whisking. Once everything's nice and smooth, add the double cream and whisk again. If your bowl is large enough, you could just combine everything at once. And don't worry about smoothness here, just whisk it all up so the ingredients are dispersed evenly. At first the cream will look like it's split, but that's just because the mix is cold. Once we warm this mix up, the cream will melt and everything will become nice and smooth. We're going to use a double boiler to warm it up and to do this correctly, you must ensure that the water is not touching the bottom of the bowl. Because if it does, you'll end up with scrambled eggs. Delicious lemon flavored scrambled eggs. Mmm. Jokes aside, do not let the water touch the bottom of the bowl. You'll regret it. Make sure the water is boiling the whole time. Stir the mix gently. Keep warming it up to 60 degrees Celsius. That's 140 degrees Fahrenheit. It will take some time. It took me around 10 minutes in total. Towards the end, you want to place the pastry case back into the oven. The reason for warming up the pastry case and warming up the custard is to make it all bake nice and evenly. And of course it will take less time too, which will again prevent the pastry case from getting soggy. This is all in the pursuit of the perfect lemon tart. Once your custard is ready, pour it into a jug and then use a spoon to remove the largest bubbles from the surface of the custard. This will ensure that the filling is nice and smooth. To make it absolutely perfect, you should use a blowtorch. It will get rid of all the bubbles in seconds. Using a spoon is a bit of a pain to be honest. Okay, now it's time to combine the base with the filling. Gently pour the filling into the tart case whilst it's still in the oven. You don't want to move it around, you'll make a mess. Fill it up as high as you can. There will be a little bit left over. 
Now let's close the door and bake this thing for 30 minutes. For this tart to be as smooth as it can be, the filling should be baked to 70 degrees Celsius and that is 158 degrees Fahrenheit. The eggs will be fully cooked at 75 degrees Celsius or 167 degrees Fahrenheit. It will still be extremely smooth at that temperature. So if you are worried about undercooked eggs, just bake it for a couple minutes longer. And don't worry about taking the temperature, it just ruins the surface. If you bake it for 30 to 35 minutes, it will be perfect. Okay, place the tart in the fridge and leave it until it's completely cooled down. Okay, here's a quick note about the edge of the pastry. If you have a tart case with a lip, this is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with having this little lip. It looks good. But if you want to trim it off, then the best time to do this is right after the pastry case comes out of the oven. And that is after the case comes out of the oven, not after the tart comes out of the oven. I just trimmed it off now to show you what it looks like. Of course, it would have looked a lot better if I trimmed it off earlier. But again, I just did show you both ways. And there you have it. That's how you make a perfectly smooth lemon tart with a beautiful, perfectly baked short pastry base. I don't even want to know how many calories there are on each slice of this. The worst part is that it's so refreshing and so smooth that it goes down so easily. You will have eaten way too much of this before you realize. So be sure to get those steps in that day, or perhaps that week I should say. So what do you think this recipe? Have you tried something like this before? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.